All right, so good afternoon. Welcome everybody to our Amherst community chat for April 1st. Today we've got some of our Amherst ambassadors joining us and we'll introduce everybody in just a moment. Before we do that, I'd like to give your town manager, Paul Balkeman, a chance to give any general updates he has. Thanks, Brianna. Yeah, um, so this is the start of our budget season. Uh, this, today was the deadline for the school department and the library to submit their budgets to me, which they have done. Uh, there will be a hearing uh, public forum on the regional school budget on Monday, and then the library and elementary school budgets will be incorporated into the budget that I present to the town council on May 1st. So that this launches off a pretty robust period of the next three months really of during April, May and June of having the town council review the budget proposals, um, deciding what the priorities are of the town because we all know that your budget is, is a statement of your priorities. And um, it's, it'll be a really inter interesting thing. We're in really interesting times, a lot of new initiatives that people are trying to do to uh, push forward with not much money. Um, and so we're we're still suffering from the pandemic uh, deflation of our a lot of our funds that normally come in. So we're we're struggling on the revenue side with a lot of demand. So it's a it's a it'll be a really fun time to be thinking about things. So that's where we're going to be headed next few weeks. Budget time, budget mm -hmm. season. Um, and, and for those folks who are interested in staying up to date with that, you can visit us online, amherstma.gov slash budget. Uh, from there, you can see the current, previous, and um, upcoming budget and any information that's available um, right now for those um, documents. So first, we're going to introduce Kat, Taylor, and Joe. Kat's been um, with us a couple of times for updates on the program. Off and on, Kat is the coordinator of the Amherst Ambassador Program. And so I'm going to invite Kat to introduce um, herself first, and then we'll go around the, the room. Great. Thank you. Um, as, as you said, my name is Kat. Uh, I use she, her, her pronouns. I am the COVID-19 Ambassador Coordinator. It's a mouthful. Um, and I've been running this program since it started in September. Um, and yeah, uh, my background is in gender studies and Spanish, my undergrad and my master's is in social justice education. Um, and when I'm not working, I competitively power lift and hang out with my dog. So that's a little bit about me. Thank you, Kat. I'm, and I'm gonna go to Taylor next because she, she's in my my top, top left screen here. So Taylor. Hey, I'm Taylor Martin Graham. I use she, her, hers pronouns. I am on the ambassador team. I work in the social media and outreach department area. And I am studying at UMass for my bachelor's degree in international business and environmental law. Um, when I'm not studying like crazy, I am either in my garden or working on my latest craft project or hanging out with my cat. Um, and yeah, that's me. Awesome, Taylor. Thanks for being here today. And Joe. Hi there. I'm Joe Maspo. I use uh, he, him, his pro pronouns. Um, I have a master's degree in history. I've been with this program uh, since September. Um, I help Kat with a lot of the programmatic things and I kind of have my, my hands in all the pots here. So I'm eager to talk about uh, everything this program does. Well, thank you all for your, your um, intros. And just before we launch into some questions that we have um, prepared for, for this team, I just wanna put it out there that the ambassadors are just, have been so great positive um, team to have on board and they roll up their sleeves and are willing to help with almost anything we've, mm -hmm. we've ever asked of them. So I wanna just acknowledge that and say thank you for that um, over this last difficult year. So we, early on, we've, we've had Kat on to talk about the program. And I think one thing we wanted to discuss is the evolution of the program and what's changed since when you first started and had that mission critical, what does that look like now? And that's for anybody to answer. So Kat, go ahead and. Yeah, so um, I'll start a little bit. And I think, you know, Taylor's working, bringing that on kind of shows some of the, the steps and how we've expanded. And then Joe, you can talk maybe a little bit about the vaccine clinics and the um, hotline. But really, you know, at its core, when we when we started this program, there was the mask mandate in downtown Amherst. And really, you know, as many folks know, 
sort of creating a culture of care um, and compliance through education, I think over sort of enforcement, uh, you kind of catch more flies with sugar than with uh, one that, than with vinegar, I think is the saying, right? Um, so we really started out as really just handing out masks and, and being a mass distribution program and walking sort of the downtown area and letting folks know like, hey, you forgot your mask or do you know that you're in the mask mandate zone and kind of reemphasizing that that existed. Um, and then really over time, one of the things that we structured, the way that we built up the program and the way that we sort of communicate and staff the program is to be highly flexible. Um, and so what we then saw was, you know, we do outreach, which is sort of face to face interactions with residents. So we did some out in October was a big push um, for both our permanent residents as well as our student residents in the town talking about sort of Halloween safety and things like that. We also do smaller outreach weekly. Um, in different targeted neighborhoods. Um, but as the sort of the, the year went on, um, you know, coming like up back into November, we saw that we were then shifted to work at the polling sites um, and sort of ensured social distancing, just kind of handed out masks there, let people know about some of the changes that were in place because of COVID at the polling sites, such as hand sanitizer and things like that. And then um, community testing launched in December uh, with a grant that UMass had received. Um, and so starting December 16th, we then were at the Mullen Center um, and greeting folks with community testing. And what's been cool about that is we're at almost 25,000 interactions um, that we've been greeting folks since that time, which is really exciting. Um, and then, sort of as time went on. And then once we had a vaccine, now multiple vaccines, um, we then shifted our focus and kind of helped um, be at some of those sites to greet folks, um, help sort of with like out, outside sort of line management, um, and then also work with the COVID line, uh, which we had been staffing since the fall, but has kind of taken on a new role, which I'm gonna let Joe speak to that because he often staffs that line, but. Good, Joe, do you wanna talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the hotline, I, again, has kind of changed since the fall. Um, we've seen that uh, since the start of, you know, January-ish, a um, lot more vaccine calls have been coming in. So uh, people calling, asking, you know, how to get an appointment, um, where appointments will be, just general questions on how they can get started on the process. Um, so myself and actually another uh, ambassador uh, staff the hotline on the weekends from nine to five on Saturday. And we have somebody else 12 to three on Sunday uh, where we answer these questions live, um, also return any messages that might've been left during the week. Um, so we try to get back to everybody and connect them to the resources that can best help them. Um, this is kind of a change in the fall when it was a lot more questions about testing, contact tracing, um, businesses, you know, guidelines with reopening as we are still in the early stages of reopening. Um, it definitely has shifted more towards vaccine calls now. Um, but I think the spirit of the hotline is that we're more of a, a triage center for support. So no matter what kind of question gets thrown at us, uh, we're there with the resources to kind of point you in the right direction. Um, I also do want to mention that we're not just a concern line. Sometimes people you know, call us the COVID concern line. Um, we're here to answer questions. Uh, we're here to hear your feedback. Um, it doesn't always have to be a negative thing if you want to call us. If you just generally have some questions and want more information on something, we're here and happy to help you. Yeah, and I think that's really the core of our work is it's a lot of relationship building. And just, I think, particularly in the pandemic, right, when folks are feeling isolated, having a number that you can call and speak to a real person in live time um, or get a call back is is just really reassuring. And Taylor, I want to um, tag you in to talk a little bit also about the virtual side of our work that we do. Yeah, so a big step in our program's evolution was obviously joining social media. So I work on the Instagram, which I'll give you guys later, but um, our Instagram really is focused on not just keeping up with like the state, but also our town and our community specifically. And so what I work on a lot is, you know, just not just keeping up with like everything, all the new information, but also fielding some of that. So similar to what Joe does is, I, we will put out information about what's new, the new phases, the new vaccine clinics. Um, we'll put the dates and the times out for our town. And then we also get a bunch of questions in our DMs um, and we'll often put in our stories, like people give the chance for people to ask us questions in our stories. Um, and we can actually post a lot of the answers there as well. So we kind of try to jump ahead of, of 
you know, the calls that we're getting. So if we know that a new phase and rollout is coming, we'll talk and post about that um, to kind of field some of those questions before they even get to the, to the line, the COVID concern flag, um, so that people aren't just, you know, talking about that with them. Um, but our Instagram is a really great way for people to kind of ask those questions too if they might not feel like calling all the time. Um, it's very open to a different and a much wider range of people, um, especially for those who maybe have um, disabilities or anxieties about calling, they can always come to us on our Instagram as well. And it's a little bit more, um, you know, people are able to kind of see the information rather than just hear it. So it just takes on a different type of person. Um, so we're really excited to have our Instagram be launched and we are loving all of the feedback that we get on it too. And Taylor, how can people find you on yep. Instagram? Yeah, so if you wanna go ahead and search for us on Instagram or online at, at Amherst Ambassador, all lowercase, all one word, that's it, at Amherst Ambassador, and you can find us there. And can you talk about who you have a frequent special guest in your posts? Can you oh, say a little bit about of course. that? Yeah, so our posts, we try to make it to a wide range of people. Our audience is actually, so about 51% is between the ages of 25 and 44. So that's a pretty wide range. So we try to hit a little bit of everyone and every Wednesday we do Winston Wednesdays. So a lot of you guys have met Winston, the comfort dog. And so every week we try to feature him in some way. Um, it's always a joy because he's just the cutest thing. So how can you not want to see what he's up to? Um, and we love having him on our team and with us. So whether it's on video or just the cutest little pictures of him sleeping and all of his little wrinkles, <laughs> definitely check us out because we always have the best content for him um, on our page on Wednesdays. And then, you know, some secret surprises every now and again on our stories. So we do that and then um, definitely look out for our posts. We try to do a lot of outreach with our community. So in our stories, um, people often will send us, you know, different information or different businesses and Amherst will reach out to us and we love updating the community on what different businesses and community members are doing. So it's not just COVID stuff, it's also about reaching out to our community and making this like a really wonderful and safe place. So definitely follow us for Winston content, but also for community content and COVID health and safety content. And if you like the, the color yellow, everything yes. is yellow. Yes. <laughs> Which is a very happy color. It yeah. is. It really it is. Immediately. Mm-hmm. Plus when you're scrolling through Instagram all day, it's very, it pops, you know? So. Mm-hmm. We love it. We're lucky that we took the photo of Winston in the shirt when we did, because I don't know if he would fit in one now. No way. He's so much bigger. So we've had, Joe and I have, well, sometimes Taylor's remote, so we'll sometimes do the video and sort of send it over to her. And we did when community testing launched. I just remember we kind of picked him up on the desk and kind of like used his paws to navigate to show that it was pretty easy to sign up for community testing. And now he's kind of the size of a bear. Um, last week when Joe and I were, um, in the office, we both got startled because he snores. It sounds like, a <laughs> so he's, uh, he's pretty fun to work with. We're going to have to get him a, a spandex or <laughs> some kind of new shirt that <laughs> will keep up with the growth. Yeah. Well, thank you, Taylor, for that description. I think that's great. We'll make sure to include a link to your Instagram page, which we did initially um, when, we, when we post up this video for everybody so they can find it. Um, so that's one way that you can keep up with the ambassadors virtually. So one, one thing is, where can people expect to see you kind of in the wild and, and on the streets? What, what does that look like? So do you want to answer that uh, one? I, I can take this one. Um, so, you know, initially uh, the ambassadors were, the program was created to hand out masks in, we call the mask zone downtown, um, which runs from the, the border of UMass down to College Street, where Amherst College is, uh, from Link, Lincoln Avenue in the west to Triangle Street in the east. 
Um, so that's the sort of area that you can kind of see ambassadors out and about walking around, you know, interacting with town residents, um, distributing masks, uh, answering questions, et cetera. Um, but we have branched out from there. Um, so you'll also see us at the Mullen Center, um, helping with community testing, guiding people as to where they need to go, answering questions about the basic process. Um, just as a sort of reminder, there is community testing that's ongoing Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays. Um, Tuesdays 7 to 5, Wednesdays 8.30 to 5, and Thursdays 8.30 to 7. Um, so you'll see us there during business hours. Uh, and then additionally, we do uh, assist at vaccine clinics as they come up, again, um, helping with line management, answering questions about the process, kind of getting people into the building, what to expect, um, and distributing masks as they do come in. So lots of ways you can run into us around town. But yeah, I just wanted to, you, you mentioned the testing that's going on at, at the Mullen Center. A lot of folks are going to be traveling over the next few days and just want to encourage everyone when they come back, go get a test. It's free. It's so efficiently run. You're in and out. I mean, my average time was about seven or eight minutes um, and it's Same. free parking and just like shoot through, get, you know, if, if you've gone away for the weekend or seen family or anything like that, I know where everybody's sort of loosening up a little bit. Uh, w there is the fear of a resurgence in our community. Um, so we got to keep tracking it. And so going down and getting a quick test would be really important for folks. That's a great point, Paul, you know, with, with holiday travel anticipated, and it really is, I think, from beginning to end, a really easy process, getting your appointments, very easy. There's always appointment slots there every time I go to schedule my weekly appointment. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think, Joe, are you the map guru on the team? He is actually our map guru. Yeah. Yes. I love your maps. Great job. <laughs> I, I wondered, you know, you guys get to actually be out in the community doing something. We talked a little bit about this that maybe Paul and I probably are jealous of. We don't get to necessarily, you know, meet and greet and see people out in the, the real world as much, <laughs> as much. So have there been, could you each share like maybe a story of impact or something that really stuck with you through your work over the last few months, whether it was a phone call or an in-person at the vaccine clinic, just something that really stood out to you that kind of signified the importance of your work. Yeah, I'll go first. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I don't know why I keep running to this person in the same place, um, but there is just the, the nicest old woman um, I see walk by the Aya Sushi uh, downtown. I, I run into her maybe once or twice a week. Um, and every time I see her, we, we stop and chat. Um, she's, she just tells us she's really happy to see us out there, asks us, you know, how things have been, um, where we'll see. It's kind of the same questions that we've, we've been answering here. Um, and just having a conversation with this person. I think it's, it's really a good thing that we have that element of human face-to-face -face interaction, you know, masked and six feet away, um, but being able to uh, be that presence in the community. Um, so I, I look forward to walking by the Aya Sushi on my shifts for sure. I love that. Thank you. Kat, Kat has some stories, I bet. Yeah, so I have two that I can think of. One was um, when we were outside the vaccination clinic um, for the 75 and up, um, and we had a couple of, like, that was just a really heartwarming kind of experience all around because I think for many folks in that population, many had not left their homes since last March. And so there were cute little moments from sort of, you know, letting folks know like, oh, you can step up in line, you know, um, the line is, you know, progressing forward and having folks sort of say, oh, I'm so sorry. I just was enjoying the breeze on my face and watching people because I haven't people watched oh. in a long time. Or we had some folks, um, we had one fella who was 94 who looked super sharp and just very dapper and we had complimented his outfit and he said oh i was so excited to go out of the house i spent three days picking my outfit out oh. um, you know so there's those kind of smaller moments to you know we had somebody who had stopped us and she said is this what my tax dollars are paying for like what is this program and really a lot of people um in that population and up sort of hadn't really been in the downtown area because they were staying home because of the pandemic so it was really the first time that they had seen us we kind of had that a couple of those interactions similarly at polling sites. Um, so that was cool to see, but a very notable um, last one that I can think of, um, I had a staff member come in after her shift and um, she had engaged with some of the folks who identify as homeless um, in our on one of her shifts. And she had come in and she said, 
you know, growing up, she was from the Boston area and she said, growing up, my parents had kind of taught me to sort of stay away from folks like that. And um, she said, they had such rich stories. And I spent about 20 minutes just having this really lovely conversation with this person. And I said, you know what, like, if that's what you take from this job, that like everybody has a unique story and everybody is worth that time to sit and just get to know people, um, you know, like, I was like, great, then you've, you've done a great job. And in, in, as you know, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, but um, there's just, there's so much richness in the community of Amherst. And so just like you said, you know, we're really lucky in that we get to have those six feet away mass interactions, but it's, um, I it just, it's exciting to kind of hear folks. And it's also cool because our program, our youngest person is 18 and our eldest, our oldest person is 71. Um, so when we got to do the vaccine clinics and things like that, when we talk about peer education, I think in the in the context of Amherst, it's often talked about as student to student sort of peer education. Um, but I think in the pandemic, which is really intergenerational, it's been really cool to watch how we've had some of these folks that are non-college age, um, you know, folks on our staff be able to kind of create that, that peer-based um, relationship. And our um, Steve, who's our eldest member on our team, he had said, I had this wonderful interaction with this person at the vaccine clinic. Can I work the next time, you know, two weeks from now when he gets his shot? Because he was really, he was really nervous. And I, I just feel like we had a connection and I told him I would be there. And so, you know, we got to make sure to do that. And having people show up and say, oh, you're Joe and Elise. I talked to you on the phone. Like it's, it's those sort of small town feels that, um, highlights the privilege of this work in a, in a different way, I think. Yeah, I actually have a story too. Um, even though I am a remote worker, I so a lot of the times we are always looking through the Amherst tags and everything on Instagram. And I come across so often like small businesses, self-employed people who are making their own things um, and who are part of our community. And right during quarantine, um, when it was pretty bad still and people hadn't been out for a long time. Um, we got a lot of people who, you know, were obviously in a tougher place mentally and were, you know, struggling to kind of do their thing and feel inspired. And so I was looking through pages and I remember once I had seen this artist, local artist who was just really incredible and we featured them on our story. And we got a lot of feedback and they messaged us saying like, it just made their day and it was just a really wonderful way to pull people into our community when they were feeling very isolated and we could actually do that virtually um, even though it wasn't you know us seeing them in person so not only are we interacting with people in person but we are making meaningful connection online too that's great and it really does take all different methods and mediums to to reach everybody in our community so i think that's you know equally as important to be doing that in the virtual space. Um, so we are coming up on our last five or so minutes. I One thing I think people should be aware of, and maybe it's not fully planned, but what's next for the ambassadors? Where will we see you this summer? Uh, will, your, will your reach expand from where you've been? And will you be filling any other um, functions or roles? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are, um, we're kind of a constantly evolving uh, program, if you, if you hadn't guessed. Um, and so I think for the summer, um, many of our students choose to sort of leave the area for summer jobs and things like that. And so we are going to have sort of a shift in our staff. But I think, and this is, you know, obviously up to to Paul and, and the chief, um, who is my direct report as well, since we're housed in the police station. Um, but I think what we're looking at is sort of keeping some folks in the walking zone um, and then partnering potentially with the Department of Public Works um, in the conservation area to kind of look at um, bringing on some new staff and sort of keeping our folks kind of in the downtown area. I think that'll be really important. We know um, as of today that outdoor dining is coming back to the Amherst area and things like that. So kind of a return to the basics is probably what you may see um, our folks kind of emphasizing, particularly as more of our population becomes vaccinated. Um, and then hopefully in the fall, you know, when we have an influx of undergrad and uh, graduate students back in the area, I think, again, we're going to have that sort of re-education phase of, of kind of, you know, re-emphasizing that. So you'll definitely see us around in the summer. Um, we might be a little bit of a smaller task force, if you will, but we will still be um, around. And then um, our intention is to continue to help staff any of the vaccine clinics and things like that, as well as the hotline. Great. Um, and, and still in yellow. Yes. Still in yellow. Yes. Okay. We, uh, as much as yellow can sometimes be a hard item to, to find in terms of items, people have really become 
uh, we are known for yellow. People will pull over on the side of the road and say, you're the mask folks, right? Like, can mm -hmm. we have some and things like that. So we're sticking with yellow. And, you know, I think we like the idea of making a positive impact and just making people have a, you know, a big smile under their mask faces. You can tell, you can kind of see them smile in their eyes, if you will. Um, so we're going to stick with the yellow. So always look for the yellow shirts and come and, you know, stop us, chat with us, ask us questions. We're definitely here to support and offer resources or just to have a conversation too, because sometimes people just need that in their day. Um, and we should also be at the farmer's market probably, which is going to be opening up fairly soon. So you'll see us in, you know, the 17th. Um, yep. And so the markets are the 8th, I think the June 8th, I think. Oh. So we're coming up to the end of our time. Is there anything that you want people to, to know that we didn't get to touch on yet or any actions that you want to leave people with that they can do? I guess from Taylor. And um, it would be great to have people follow us, of course, um, and even better if they interacted. So a lot of times we'll post call outs basically on our stories or our posts asking for feedback or for people to send us photos. Um, we want to start kind of engaging more with like hometown heroes and people who are just, you know, sitting at home even. So we're going to be taking photos and making all sorts of stories. So if people just want to watch out for those um, and get involved, it's a great way to, to feel connected. Great. Thank you, Taylor. Hi, Pat and Joe. Yeah, I would just say, you know, our program, I really love feedback, both from my staff, as well as the community and the folks I work for and with. And so um, if you ever see sort of a, you know, a need for our program or a, an assistance with something, um, definitely bring that to us. I think um, kind of being innovative and flexible is sort of where we've excelled and it's allowed us to grow this program in a pandemic, which feels kind of like an oxymoron almost, but, um, you know, definitely come and reach out to us. And then the only other thing I would say is that oftentimes for both student and permanent residents, um, we do outreach weekly. So um, open your door if we're knocking, because usually we're, we're not soliciting, we're just, you know, wishing to have a good day, um, maybe dropping off, a, you know, a little goodie or things like that. Um, we also have created some sorry, we missed you notes that we leave um, in case folks are zooming or not home. Um, but if you see us around, just come and say hi to us. Awesome. Thanks, Kat. And how about you, Joe? Yeah, I just really um, want to say thank everybody for, uh, you know, keeping doing their good work. Um, we realize that, you know, we're out here to make try to make a difference in the town and so many of the the member uh, Amherst town members um, really kind of reciprocate that we see a lot of mask wearing, everybody's following guidelines. Um, I realize that it gets kind of tiring after a while um, that, you know, the, after getting vaccinated, you might kind of want to relax a little bit, but um, keeping up that mask wearing, uh, staying socially distant, um, really kind of keeping up with what you've been doing, I think is the message I want to just kind of put out there. Um, everybody's doing a great job. I'm so thankful. I want to get back to normal. Everybody else wants to get back to normal. Um, so just keep up the good work. That's great. Great positive message, um, Joe. Thank you. All right. So we are at our time. Um, Paul, anything, anything observations yeah, you'd like to make? Two quick things. One, one is when we started this program last year, it could have gone in lots of different directions. You know, it's, it's, it wasn't, it was like, we know we needed something. We didn't want the police to be always called when someone wasn't wearing a mask. And that was sort of the impetus for this. But the crew here and the others who have just developed this in a really um, creative, um, socially um, understanding way of what was needed in the community at the time. So I just want to appreciate everybody's efforts in it because it's been very thoughtful and respectful of people. And I think the other takeaway is that presence matters. And I think Kat, you sort of alluded to, or um, uh, Joe, you alluded to when you just met the person at, at Aya and just at the uh, vaccination clinics or at the testing center, it's nice to see someone who's there to help, whose job is to help make sure you're okay, as opposed to just a sign enter here. And it's and I noticed that at the clinics with the elder with the people over 75, that mattered a ton to those individuals because it, they were unsure and and it just occurred to, it just it just has resonated with me that presence matters and I think you understand that because you said we need to know people need to know that we're present that's why we're wearing yellow shirts and what yellow jackets people are going to know that we're present so i appreciate that sort of thoughtfulness that you've given to the entire um, program so it's, it's really really well done 
and I, I ditto to everything Paul just said. And as a local government nerd um, and, and diehard, I would love to see how this program or something like this would continue when, and I don't want to say when we get back to normal, because that is not, I think, where we're heading, but necessarily, but I'd love to see how this model could be creatively applied to regular local government business. So maybe more to come on that. Um, again, I want to thank Joe, Kat, Taylor um, for your time today. We will put this up on our channel and share it on our social media. Um, so feel free to get back to us with questions or follow up. You can email us at info at amherstma.gov and we'll get it to the ambassadors if, um, if that's ambassador related. So thank you all very much. Thank you guys. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Brianna. Thank, thank you. you.